Today's lesson, section 3.7, we're talking about rational functions. A rational function is when a function is of the form p of x over q of x, where p of x and q of x are polynomials, so you're dividing two polynomials to one another. This creates asymptotes, and so we have vertical and horizontal asymptotes. Um, vertical asymptotes happen when the denominator is equal to zero, and so we call those values, um, or we say that they're x equals some number at those points because we, we want to identify those so that we can write them down and plot them on the graph so we know where our graphs actually can't cross. Okay, Horizontal asymptotes are values at which as you're heading to infinity and negative infinity for your x value that your y value actually approaches. So kind of to show that if you have a vertical asymptote like this an example would be like So this line is where y equals b, and so notice that both arrows are heading towards that horizontal asymptote, and so they're just kind of approaching. They're never going to actually touch it in the end, but they're approaching it. Now, one thing with horizontal asymptotes to remember is when we graph, in between, like where stuff's going on, and they're not heading to like those numbers, they're a little bit more lax. Vertical asymptotes are very restrictive, and so you can't cross them with your graphs. But horizontal asymptotes, at some points, when you're really close to all the vertical asymptotes and all the other stuff that's going on, um, it actually allows the horizontal, like your graphs, to actually cross the horizontal asymptotes. So they're kind of more lax in that sense. So like, you can cross them at certain points, but as you're heading to infinity and negative infinity, they're not going to cross again. They're going to be heading towards them and just never touch. So they're just like um, points of approaching. Like they're just kind of like a suggested line, almost. So they're not really restricting. So to be able to find the asymptotes um, when you have a rational function, the vertical asymptotes you just set um, the factors in the denominator equal to zero and find those zeros, kind of like if you were um, trying to find the zeros of just a polynomial, you do the same thing. So you want to like factor them if they're not factored, and then set those equal to zero and solve. And so those will be your points. So those are usually pretty easy to find. Um, horizontal asymptotes depend on the degrees of the numerator and the denominator. So if the numerator, so that would be n, and the denominator's degree would be m, so if the numerator's degree is smaller than the denominator's degree, your horizontal asymptote is going to be y equals 0, always. Okay? If they are equal to each other, then the asymptote for the horizontal would be the leading coefficients divided by each other. So the numerator's leading coefficient and the denominator's leading coefficient will give you your horizontal asymptote. Okay? And then if the degree of the numerator is bigger than the degree of the denominator, then it actually gives you no horizontal asymptote. Um, but when that happens, you don't get a horizontal asymptote, you get a oblique or slant asymptote. So it actually changes from a horizontal line to a line with a slope, basically. Okay? And to be able to find that, you need to use long division. Now they say long division because sometimes your denominator has a power greater than 1, so it's not a binomial, and so you kind of have to use long division. Now, if it's one of a binomial form, so like it's just x minus 3, you can use synthetic division for that. Um, just know that that doesn't cover everything, so you may have to use long division um, at certain points. And so when you use division, the quotient is going to be the equation for your oblique asymptote. So you're going to get a line, basically, so like a slope-intercept form kind of um, equation. And so then that's how you graph that line. Okay. Um, sometimes also you get a hole. And so holes are when the same factor on the top is on the bottom as well. And so they kind of divide each other out. So if you had something like this, Okay, so these 
are shared. So usually if you were simplifying rational functions, you could divide those away, and then you'd just be left with x plus 1 over x minus 3. So when that happens and you graph that, at that point, you could have something that looked like this. Okay, so there's a spot where your line looks like it keeps going and in the same direction it would normally go, but then it stops at that point because you can't actually plug in 2 in this case. And so you kind of need a hole, an undefined spot on your graph. So it still makes it discontinuous, it just doesn't deter your graph's pattern or path like a vertical asymptote would. Okay? So let's try to graph some of these. So we want to be able to use transformations of the parent function of 1 over x. And what that looks like is if you have, let's make a better one. So here, for 1 over x, your asymptotes are at 0 and 0 for both x and y. And so then when I graph this, this is generally the path of your parent function. Okay? And so if I wanted to move that, starting with your your parent function. So it's really when you plug in one I get one. When I plug in two I get one half. When I plug in negative one I get negative one. When I plug in negative two I get negative one half. And so So notice that your asymptotes are always, like your lines, your graphs, are always approaching the asymptotes in these cases. And so here, if I want to do 2 over x minus 3, the x minus 3 tells me, just like if it was inside the parentheses, like it tells you to move it to left or right, because you're doing it to the x, not to the entire function. And so here, since it's negative 3, it would move it to the right, so it's always the opposite. So I go one, two, three. So then there's the next, the new middle point. I still have the same horizontal asymptote. Now my points just shift. So instead it'd be four, comma one, and five, comma one half. And then it'd be two, comma negative one, and one, comma negative one half. Okay? And then also, the 2 just stretches it vertically. And so everything's multiplied by 2 for your y value. And so then 1 becomes 2. And then 1 half becomes 1. But, but my asymptotes don't change because I'm not shifting it to the left or to the right or up or down. And then negative 1 becomes negative 2 and negative 1 half becomes negative 1. So just stretches it a little bit up, okay? So that would be what the transformations would look like with that. Um, here, example two, now we're going to show you like all the different ways you could have a, a horizontal asymptote. So if I have the function 2x plus 1 over x squared plus 10x plus 21, here I usually like to make a graph or like a table for my graph. And so first I want to identify what my asymptotes are going to be so I know where to pick my spots. So x and x, so I like to factor the denominator, so that gives me x plus 7 and x plus 3. So if I set those equal to 0, it gives me negative 7 and negative 3. So when I look on my graph, there's 1. Here's another one. Okay, now I need to identify where my horizontal asymptote is. The degree on the top is smaller than the degree on the bottom, so it must be y equals 0. Now, because I have um, two asymptotes, I have three areas to have a graph in that are all going to be kind of different. Okay, so then I'm going to pick numbers in each. Usually 2 is good. If there's a middle one like I do have, or like I have here, um, usually sometimes you may need to use 3 to determine what's going on, uh, but we can kind of see how it goes. So I'm going to pick 2 on the left of negative 7, so negative 8, 
negative 9, and then, and then in between would be negative, let's go with the middle one, so negative 5, and negative 4, and then negative 2, and negative 1, okay? So I'll plug those in, so the top gets me negative 17 divided by, so I get negative 17 twelfths, negative 8 would be negative 15, and then plug negative 8 in, get negative 1, and negative 5, so it gets me positive 5, so then that gets me negative 3, okay? So then, for this part, it looks like my stuff will be on the negative side, so negative 17 twelfths is a little bit smaller than negative 1, but bigger than negative 2, so it looks like my graph follows that pattern, okay? Negative 5, when I plug that in, I get negative 9, and then in the bottom, you get 2 and negative 2, so it would be a negative 4, so positive 9 fourths, or 2.25, and then negative 4 would be negative 7, and then in the bottom it would be 3 times negative 1, so it would be negative 3, so I get a 7 thirds. So it looks like both of them are positive at least. So then, so negative. Okay, now just for good measure, I would probably like to see what negative 6 is just so I can kind of see. I think I know what's going to happen here, but uh -huh. I want to check to make sure. So then negative 6 would be negative 11, and then um, negative, so 1, and then negative 3 would be negative 3, so 11 thirds, okay, so then negative 6 is greater than, so it's two and two-thirds. So then, yep. Yeah. So this one kind of looks like a parabola. It's a little skewed parabola, but because they're not even on both sides, but it kind of has that same shape. And then on the right side of your negative three, you plug in negative two. So that gives me negative three over, uh, so that gets me five and one. So that gives me negative five thirds, and then plugging in negative one will get me negative two, so negative one, and then over six times two is twelve. So negative one twelve. So here we'll get pretty close to. So something like that, okay? Here we have another one. So here I want to look at um, my factors a little bit more. Because sometimes they might have holes in them, so you got to check. The last one, because it was 2x plus 1 at the top, I knew that it wasn't going to have a hole with the one on the bottom, so I didn't need to factor. Plus the top is already factored for you. So here, the top is not factored. And so x squared minus 3x minus 4, you should get x minus 4 and x plus 1. I don't think it's going to happen with this one. If I take out 2x, it looks like I'm left with x plus 2. So there's nothing in common with the top or the bottom, so I don't have to divide anything out. Or there's no holes that are created. So, But I do know what my zeros are for my horizontal asymptote now. So 0 and negative 2 looks like. So. And then looking at my horizontal asymptote, because the leading coefficients for both polynomials are the same degree, 
I need to divide the leading coefficient of the top and the bottom. So 1 and 2 would give me what my horizontal asymptote is. So at 1 half, okay. So then now, do the same thing we did with the last one. I want to pick numbers in each spot. So on the left side of, of negative 2 in the middle, now here, I'm only going to get 1, like whole number. I might have to pick numbers that are uh, fractions. And then 1 and 2 on the right side. So plugging in negative 4. <laughs> So it gets me negative 8 times negative 3, so that's 20, 24 divided by, so negative 8 times negative 2, so 16, so, so 3 halves. Um, then negative 3 would be negative 7 times negative 2 would be 14. And then negative 6 times negative 1 would be 6. So that gets you 7 thirds. Okay, so a graph in here looks like we'll be above. So I got. Seven thirds is bigger than two. So looks like we have a normal one on this side, which is nice. Now in between I don't have a lot going for me, so if I plug in negative one, it gets me negative five times zero. So that's a zero over negative one times one. Or negative two times one would be negative two, so zero. Okay? So that doesn't tell me a lot. Now here, I'm going to pick a number um, to the right. So let's say we plug in um, negative one half and see what happens. So here I get actually 1.5 for negative one half. So that tells me that because I'm on both sides, this one actually crosses. And remember, I said that the horizontal asymptotes are a suggestion in the middle where stuff's going on. So it can cross here because there's more moving parts. And it's really just talking about when you're going out to the um, outskirts, so to infinity and negative infinity, when it really matters. Okay. So then when I plug in 1, I get negative 1. When I plug in 2, I get negative 3 eighths. So graph in those. Okay, so then that would be our graph for this one. And then the last one here, now I have a degree on the top that's greater than the bottom. So let's factor just quick to see. Um, x minus 5 over x plus 1 would give me that. There's nothing in common between the two, so that's good. No holes. I only have one vertical asymptote where x is equal to 3. And then horizontal asymptote because the degree on the top is bigger than the one on the bottom there is none so that means that there's a slant asymptote or oblique asymptote and so now I need to divide so like here because it's a denominator of um, power of one I can use synthetic division if I'd like to make this go a little faster so then remember it's the quotient that we're looking for for our answer so add down multiply add down multiply, 
add that one. So I don't care about the remainder, I just care about this. So this is really x minus 1. So there is my, my slant asymptote, which would be y equals x minus 1. So then let's graph that. Um, there's my vertical asymptote. And then up 1 over 1. So now, here, because you only have one vertical asymptote, I only need stuff on either side. Now, just like with the ra other regular rational exponents, it's either going to be stuff that's here and here, or it's going to be stuff here and here. So they're always going to be like kitty corner um, quadrants to each other, usually, unless like there's a like nothing at the top and it's squared on the bottom, then that one kind of is a little different, but most of the time it's always kitty corner to each other. So if I plug in um, 1 and 2 on the left and 4 and 5 on the right, so plugging in 1 gets me 4, plugging in 2 gets me 9, then plugging in 4 gets me negative 5, and then plugging in 0 gets me, or plugging in 5 gets me 0. So then 1 comma 4, oops, and then 2 comma 9, how about for this one, um, we go by 2's, so this would be 10 up here, so then 1, 4, so then this would have this kind of look, and then to the right, it would probably be in this other kitty corny area. So 4 will be negative 5. So we'll do the same thing. They're kind of stretched out a little bit, but that's kind of the look that we're going for for that kind of graph. Okay? Have fun.